Will the Arizona Cardinals offense be able to make up for the absence of Buda Baker for the next couple weeks? You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. You can follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. You know, this is kind of a difficult time in Cardinal land. It's a lot of finger pointing. There's a lot of, you know, what's going on here. There's a lot of what will happen next. And I'm going to try and bring this down to earth just a little bit. But there are some things that need to be discussed today that take precedence over that. One of which, the Cardinals are now sitting in the, in the seventh worst spot in the NFL. They have the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL draft. If the season ended today, what does that mean? I'll talk about it a little bit. Buda Baker injured. What does that mean for the next two games? And then there's a lot of speculation. Like, should somebody be removed from post? Should somebody be fired? What would that look like? Would that put the Cardinals in a worse spot than they are in now, even though the person at said post may not be equipped to do that job? I'll talk about that in the final segment. Um, but just a lot to talk about on a, on a Tuesday here and a lot to try and sort out. And I'm going to do my best to start to do that. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. So Ian Rappaport and others reported that Buda Baker has a high ankle sprain will be out potentially two to three weeks. This defense struggles when Buda Baker is not on the field. Now, Buda Baker, some have said that, you know, he hasn't had his most standout year this year. And there, there, there's a couple ways you can look at this. Has he had as many, like, super flashy plays like he normally does? No, he hasn't. Um, have we seen a couple? Yeah, it's Buda Baker. Um, I kind of look at it this way. The defense, even though they've given up a lot of points, um, you know, in key positions, are playing better. Like last year, the cornerback room wasn't great. After, you know, week five or week six, when Brad Murphy kind of fell off, Buda Baker had to step up in some capacity that way. The pass rush, same thing. The, and, and in years past, that's kind of been Buda Baker's MO. He's, he's been a safety but he's also been a lot of other things to fill gaps on the defense that the Cardinals had, whether it be from injury or otherwise. So he hasn't necessarily had to do that as much this year because even though the pass rush hasn't been great, it's been okay. Byron Murphy's been great, especially uh, regarding what we thought we could potentially see from the cornerback room when the season started. Um, but all in all, Buda Baker, although he hasn't had his best year, he's not having – a bad year by any stretch losing him for a couple weeks, especially against if he does miss two weeks against the Rams and the 49ers in back-to-back -back weeks, neither of which are played at state farm stadium. It's like yuck. So my, the question that I posed is can the offense really charge up here? Because the offense, although showing flashes throughout this season, hasn't been great. And I feel like that's, Pretty obvious at this point, it's not a hot take. It's not anything like that. It just, it, it hasn't been great. And when you look at, you know, across the NFL and you look at other rosters that are performing very well offensively, you're like, Cardinals have more talent than them. What's going on here? And yes, James Conner's missed time. The offensive line has been decimated by injury. And Hollywood Brown currently is hurt. But when you swap Hollywood Brown for DeAndre Hopkins, it's like, okay. Samesies, I mean, I guess it, it, it's not like you lose Hollywood Brown and there is no DeAndre Hopkins. The Cardinals don't understand, like people don't understand how talented this roster is compared to other bad offensive rosters in the NFL. And it's, they're just not realizing their max potential. 
And that's something that is terrifying um, because, you know, we've, we've seen this over the course of the last handful of years where offense really hasn't lived up to its potential. You can say it's Kyler Murray. I wouldn't. You could say it's Cliff Kingsbury. I would. Um, you could say it's a mixture of both. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Kyler Murray definitely has fault in this. He's kind of plateaued this year. And um, some say, like, the the short the size jokes is – I mean, I know that social media is lowbrow a lot of times, but do better than that. So what are we doing here? Um, Kyler Murray last year was an MVP through eight weeks. So – Size didn't really, his, his height didn't really matter then. So why does it matter now? People pick and choose uh, with the easiest, the easiest of, uh, of, of figure pointing, you know, qualities in somebody. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, but he hasn't been great this year. He's throwing some bad picks, threw some bad picks against Minnesota, which kind of put the Cardinals on a strength in a stranglehold where they should have won that game. Um, can the offense take that step forward that we've been waiting for? The Rams defense is the Rams defense. They've given up. A lot of points have given up little points. The Cardinals do not fare well against Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams. They did beat them last year uh, at SoFi Stadium. But after the embarrassing loss that the Rams sustained against the, the Bucks, when old man Tom Brady came down in 30 seconds, gained 60 yards and scored a touchdown, um, you know that they're going to be out for a quote-unquote get-right game. And there are very few teams in the NFL who the Rams get right better against than the Cardinals. So with Buda Baker out, the offense, we, we, like, here's the thing. We just want to see life. You want to see cohesion. You want to see passion. You want to see something. And not just, okay, these are the plays. Hope they work. Like, it's like the first drive where they scored a touchdown last week was like, we're, okay, okay. Do that again. Do it again. Like, why is there a wild disconnect between when they look great for a handful of drives this season and then I think that 83 yards in the first drive that ended in a touchdown and the next three drives had 74 total yards. It's like, what is the disconnect? Is it adjustments mid-game? Is it uh, is it the offensive line not giving uh, Kyler Murray time? Is like, I, I don't know. But with Buda Baker out for two weeks, the Arizona Cardinals offense needs to emerge as a side of the football that is much more stable and more well-equipped to putting up points. Will they do it? be interesting to see. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. The Cardinals have, as it currently sits, the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL draft. Should Steve Kahn be making that pick? We'll talk about it next. So here's the thing. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Okay. I've done and been in therapy for, you know, I, I not as of late, but, you know, growing up and through college where I was struggling and things like that, you know, therapy, they've, you know, it, it's helped me, you know, work out some issues and, and, and become, you know, more able to, you know, live this life comfortably. And, you know, unfortunately life doesn't come with a, with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best, and BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they match millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp.com. Learn more and save 10% on your, off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash locked on. That's BetterHelp.com slash locked on. Second thing, locked on Cardinals. Uh, with Budabaker out, you know, 
it's going to be tough. The offense is really going to have to emerge. You know, I feel like I, I'm a, a, a broken record, um, but this is – the offense needs to pull their weight. Needs to pull their weight. And I will discuss my – defense of the defense when the numbers point otherwise i'll talk about that tomorrow um because i feel like it needs to be addressed at this point because the defense has given up a lot of points and i've constantly said that the cardinals defense is the strength of this team and um i need to defend or i need to explain my thought process on that so it's not just a bunch of you know separate tweets and not really explaining why i think that because I'm using my eyes and I'm using my soul <laughs> of what we feel when the defense is on the, on the field and what we feel when the offense is on the field and obviously grading on a curve because of the off season and the lack of additions that were made to the defense. That was inversely uh, what happened to the offense when they had some additions made. The Cardinals sit with the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL draft as of today. Um, I did not have this on my bingo card. I did not think that the Cardinals would start being six. I didn't. Um, when I saw that, I, I saw it on Tankathon or something and it's like, oh, well that kind of makes it real. Uh, sure. And they're, you know, they're two games in the win column out of, you know, 13th or 14th. So this is very, very existential of us to be discussing this. But the question remains, the better the pick, the better, the higher the pick. See, this bothers me. Okay. The higher the pick, higher should mean higher number. So that should be 20th. 23rd, 24th, 23 is higher than 20. And one is lower than 20. But I've got to use my, you know, my my frog brain here to use the, the correct terminology. The higher draft pick, fine. It's not right, but it's fine because that's what people use. The higher the draft pick, what are your thoughts on Steve Kime making that pick? Let's break this down. Let's break this down on a Tuesday afternoon. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Please go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Hit the like button on this video. Turn notifications on. Um, so, say the Cardinals have the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL draft. And say the Cardinals have the 12th pick in the 2023 NFL draft. Like, two different scenarios. Are you more apt to being okay with Steve Kime drafting at seven because it should be easier to draft a better player and less variability involved than drafting at 12? Or are you more comfortable having Steve Kime draft at 12 because there are better that there's more of a chance that variability is included there? So it gives him kind of a pass on having to pick the right player. If you're Michael Bidwell, do you have that conversation with yourself? Like, what am I doing here? So if the Cardinals pick like fourth, it's like, do you want Steve Kahn making that pick? But if the Cardinals pick 15, it's like, well, you know, most first round picks are misses. So we kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm saying this somewhat in jest, but think about this. The Cardinals should get a couple compensatory third round picks from Chandler Jones and Christian Kirk. So that means that they'll have a first round pick, a second round pick, and three third round picks. Okay. Do you want Steve Keim making those picks? Because remember, and it gets a little wonky uh, with compensatories in the third, but the Cardinals would have the, say the, the seventh round pick in the first round and the seventh round pick in the second round and all the way through. Do you trust Steve Kime to make those picks when, even though for the Steve Kime truthers out there, 
He's had a couple good picks over his 10 drafts of being an NFL general manager. Sure, he's had a couple. The best was Buda Baker trading up in 2017, trading up, drafting Buda Baker at the top of the second round. That was the best pick that he's made, in my opinion, because he he saw talent, he addressed it, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to go get that guy because he won't be here a couple picks down the road. When, when the Cardinals pick. So we went up and it, and it actually worked out. I'm, I'm going to implore people because I'm going to take this to Twitter after this because I'm, I, I don't know. I, I'm self-loathing or whatever, <laughs> but like just because, and I say this without being um, patronizing or without, you know, without anything like that, just because people can name players who are on the field right now that Steve Kime drafted doesn't mean they were good draft picks. Just because people can name players on the field right now that Steve Kime drafted doesn't mean they were good draft picks. Isaiah Simmons, as of right now, eighth overall, not a good draft pick. And and the thing, the thing that compounds this is, this isn't Isaiah Simmons' fault that they needed to draft an offensive lineman there, and they didn't. So not only do the players that Steve Kime draft not work out a lot of the time, but they moved away from players who would have made an impact at a position of need if they were to be drafted in that spot. So it's a double cluster. It's a double whoopsie-daisy by Steve Kime in multiple situations. Andy Isabella, another one. Andy Isabella, UMass, okay? led whatever nation and he played football in the FCS, FB, whatever. When you had DK Metcalf, who was built in a lab. Okay. Number one. Oh, he can only run straight. Well, um, I'd rather take a chance on a huge outside wide receiver than a gadget guy and trust Cliff Kingsbury to use it. Now I know Cliff Kingsbury wanted Andy Isabella. You know what? Don't let Cliff Kingsbury make decisions. How about that? You're the GM. You draft a wide receiver, take a guy like Terry McLaurin, big college. Deontay Johnson, big college. DK Metcalf, SEC college. Okay? So, not only is it the wrong draft position taken a lot of times, the person that's drafted doesn't pan out, so it's a double whoopsie daisies. Let's just make it sugar-coated here on a Tuesday afternoon before I go off the rails. That's the struggle bus that all of us, people that cover the Cardinals, people that are on radio talking about the Cardinals, people who have been fans of the Cardinals forever, deal with. Not It's not just that the draft pick didn't work out. It's that an obvious pain point on this roster was not addressed at the same time. Problematic. Should Steve Keim have any say in who the Cardinals draft next year? No. There's that tease paid off for you. Locked on Cardinals. Um, so we can softly talk about what could happen. And I think you'll be surprised at my thought process of if this happens, is this best for the team? And I'm going to talk about that next. Uh, Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. First, though. I need to talk about something that makes me happy. It's prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com. Download the prize picks app. They make daily fantasy easy. You can make, you can place your bet in under 60 seconds. You pick two to five players, and whether they're going to score more or less than their prize picks projection, and you can win up to 10, 10 times your cheese on one bet. It's that easy. Not just NFL, NBA. Major League Baseball obviously came to an end, but when when it comes around next year, you'll be able to use that. NHL, college basketball, women's college basketball, WNBA, esports, whatever. Picks, Price Picks got you covered with all of it. So again, download the Price Picks app, okay? And Price Picks will match your first deposit up to $100 with promo code locked on, okay? So if you deposit $100, you instantly get hundred bucks from price picks. It's hundred percent instant deposit match. You deposit 50 price picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. 
been a girthy episode. It's been a heavy podcast. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. Okay. Buda Baker, out a couple weeks. Will the offense step up? We'll see. The Cardinals are sitting at the seventh overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft. Will Steve Kime make that pick or wherever they land? And also a couple of compensatory picks they're going to get from Chandler Jones and Christian Kirk. We'll see. Chances are yes. I hope no. I mean, this is, you know, definition of insanity, baby. Hashtag DOI. Let's talk lightly here. We're not going to get into what should happen. We're not going to get into what I'd like to see happen, what you'd like to see happen. Let's just lay the facts out. There are a couple different ways. If Say the Cardinals lose on Sunday to the Rams. Okay, let's do this. Say they go one and two in their next three ahead of their bye week. That would put them at four and eight through 12 weeks. And they play the Rams, the 49ers, and the Chargers. One of them is at home, even though technically two of them are home games one of, the, one of those being uh, playing San Francisco and Mexico City. The Rams are reeling. The 49ers are emerging, and the Chargers are the Chargers right in the middle. Okay, um, Chargers are going to be without, you think, their top two wide receivers for a while. Uh, we'll see if, if Keenan Allen comes back by that point, but Mike Williams should be out for that game. And the 49ers, you know, Debo Samuel has been hobbled, but you think the Debo and Christian McCaffrey and the whole Calvary – is going to be ready to roll, especially with that front seven that they have. And then you have the Rams on Sunday at SoFi Stadium, the team that's playing the worst of those three teams, and it's not close. The Rams' offense has not been good this year. They only put up 20 points on the Cardinals, and yes, if we remember, Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson both had touchdown drops, but the Cardinals couldn't get in the end zone. They only kicked four field goals. The Cardinals should have won that game for sure um, in week three, I believe. So say the Cardinals go one and two and they go into their bye week at four and eight. And this is barring no sort of like 33 to nothing blowout, or this is barring, you know, the Cardinals getting on a run, which we, which hopefully happens, you know, it can beat a hobbled Rams. You know, it's, it's anything could happen on a neutral field with the Cardinals and 49ers and they can beat the Chargers. Like this offense could turn on at any point. Could turn on at any point. If they go one and two, which is like, that's been kind of the trend of this season. So This isn't like a hopeful, this isn't a negative segment. This is just a, this is what's been happening. So if this trend continues, let's see. What are the options? One, they could fire Cliff Kingsbury after week 12. Do I think it'll happen? No. Should it happen? Yes and no. Let me explain. Michael Bidwell and Steve Kahn have made their bet. Okay. I feel like they're the only ones that didn't see that a contract extension was a bad idea before this season was played out. It's not that Cliff Kingsbury didn't deserve a contract extension. Um, But I don't know why an extension was necessary when there was still a year left on his deal. Well, you don't want a lame duck head coach. Well, maybe make that head coach prove that he was worthy of a contract extension. And then the first seven games of last year weren't a fluke. Just make him do it. Why not? Let's see what happens. Instead of you know, ball and chaining yourself to somebody through 2027 when there are massive questions about his leadership and coaching ability. Two things that are very important to be a head coach in the NFL. So take that aside. Should he be fired? Yes. Should he have ever gotten the job? No. But we're way past that at this point. Should he be fired? Yes. Is it a bad idea? Yes. And the reason why is, with a season that would be lost, it seems, if the head coach were to be fired. That's a no-win situation. Because what that does is it breeds contempt, not for any one specific person or entity, but it completely unravels what is looking to somewhat becoming unraveled, but it's still together it would completely remove the restrictor plane on that. And that would be, and I have a couple people in mind here, a couple players in mind. That would be difficult to mend 
for DeAndre Hopkins for retaining J.J. Watt, you'd think. Zach Ertz, James Conner, like these guys that have gotten contract extensions, okay? Something that's, once I realized this, it kind of took some of my fandom away just of sports in general, but it also like made me super interested in the actual business of sports. Once a player signs a massive contract extension or, you know, contract extension whatsoever, Zach Ertz and James Conner, I think they got 48 million combined, not even all the guaranteed money on their contract. So it's not a massive amount, but once players sign a multi-year deal, whether it be massive or not, they become trade assets immediately. It doesn't look like it right away and it may never come to fruition that way, but that is something they move aisles in the mind of a front office where it's like, yes, they're, they're one of our best players. They say to themselves. And if we're in a pinch, see ya draft capital, you know, especially, <clears throat> pardon me, especially with the NFL changing to be more NBA ish when it comes to free agency and the trade and trades and stuff. I feel like it would be a mistake, even though it's the right thing to do. Chew on that. That's the world in which we live in the Arizona Cardinals. Dumb. There was a king. I don't know. That's when talking about the Arizona Cardinals, even the obscure and abstract needs to be discussed. Should the Cardinals fire Cliff Kingsbury if they go four and eight or worse into their bye week? Yes. Is it a bad idea if they do? Yes. Chew on that. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Locked on Cardinals.